Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome to Tricentis Tosca Automation Tutorial. As you all know, I have already published 12 YouTube videos covering different concepts of Tricentis Tosca latest version 16. So in my previous session, I have covered the action modes select, verify and then wait on. Okay, so I would recommend you guys to please go through my previous session before watch this session so that you can understand the concepts very well. And this is our lesson 13 where I'm going to teach you the action mode buffer. How can we use the action mode buffer while automating your test cases? And then how can you use the math function while automating your test cases. So math functions and action mode buffer are very very important concepts while performing some verification as part of your test case automation. And also I'm going to teach you dynamic expressions like dynamic text, dynamic numbers and the dynamic dates. How can you use dynamic text? How can you use the dynamic numbers and the dynamic dates while automating your test cases and provide your test data, dynamic test data instead of static test data as an input to your test case. Okay, so these are all really very very important concepts to automate your test cases and to make it very easy to automate your business cases okay please do subscribe to the channel click on bell icon you'll receive notifications whenever i publish more videos stay tuned and let's jump on to the next slides okay so what is our first agenda item so our first agenda item is action mode buffer so to use action mode buffer while automating the test. So I'm going to teach you how to use action mode buffer while automating your test cases. So any test case, when you automate any kind of test case, it is very important part of testing is to save and reuse the values that the SUT has provided you. So this makes verification flexible, right? So if you if you are able to save some values retrieved from your system under test or retrieved from your application, and if you are able to save them in one of the variables as a buffer, so that you can reuse them while verification part. Instead of using any hard coded data, save generated values by using buffer. So this makes your verification very flexible. What is the syntax? You can see on screen the syntax of buffer is open curly braces capital B and your uh, and then square braces open and your buffer name correct and then close your square braces and then close your curly braces. So this is the syntax to use buffer. Anyway, I'm going to show you practically by using Tasca in next slides. Okay. And then we should use this buffer only be created and used in the same test case. So when you are creating buffer, you should be able to create in one of the test case and you should be able to use in the same test case. You cannot use buffer in different test cases. So to use shared test data, you have a separate concept called test data. So you can visit my long back videos related to test design doc, test design, task or test design concepts. So you can visit those particular videos in the playlist. Okay. And you can find the links in my description. Okay. So now and what is our next agenda item? Let's go to the next agenda item. Okay, so our next agenda item is dynamic expressions. How can you use dynamic expressions while automating your test cases by using latest version of Tasca 16? 
So I'm going to teach you how to use math functions and then how can you use dynamic text or how can you generate dynamic text and then use it as a test data while automating your test cases. And how can you generate random or dynamic random values while automating your test cases. And then how can you generate dynamic date while automating your test cases. So I'm going to teach you with examples while automating one of our test case. So now let's jump onto the system and see how can we use all these concepts practically by using Tosca 16. Okay, so this is my Tosca 16. Uh, if you remember, so in my previous session, we have covered action modes, right? For that, we have created this folder and the entire test case. And I explained you about the action modes, verify, select and wait on. Okay, so I'm going to copy the same folder here. Copy. And let's duplicate the folder in the parent folder parent folder okay so i'm duplicating the um, work as of now but going forward we are going to use the reusable functions okay uh, but yeah for this session let me rename this folder as session 13 first let's let me cover buffer and math function okay Okay, so if you see the agenda item, right? If you see the agendas, first we need to cover the action mode buffer and I'm going to cover even math function along with the buffer, okay? So here, let's expand this. Let's expand, let's go to process, under process, order product, okay? Under order product, blue jeans, when you are actually ordering the blue jeans, let's go to apparel and shoes and go to blue jeans. Here we are specifying the quantity and the price. I mean, it shows the price and where you are specifying the quantity as 25 and add to cart, right? So here I want to capture the price of blue jeans so that I can verify the price of my blue jeans during checkout process okay so now for one blue jeans this is the price now when i am when i am checking out 25 blue jeans right i want to verify the price so that's why i'm going to store the price of blue jeans into a buffer okay so if you see this is my price container right i already captured all the controls if you see this is my price container and this is my quantity edit box. This is my add to cart button, right? So for this price, I want to capture the inner text. So if you go here, simple, see, when you want to capture the inner text, go to this arrow mark, go to property, click on inner text, operator, equal to here specify the buffer variable name price blue jeans price blue jeans this is what the variable or the buffer i want to store okay and once you done this see i specified this here i need to use action mode as buffer as soon as i select this this equal will turn into arrow mark. That means the inner text is stored under the variable called or under the buffer called price blue jeans. Okay, that's done. Now save this. And now once I store the price of this blue jeans, let's go to your shopping cart. And let's check out these 25 blue jeans. Says continue, continue, continue. Okay. 
here before i confirm the order i want to verify all these items whether the price is correct or not i want to verify the subtotal of subtotal i want to verify if subtotal plus uh, shipping ground these two are i want to verify subtotal and the total along with the shipping shipping cost okay so here let's go to for that let's go to one of the folder called verification of prices here in my previous session i have already showed you verifying the shipping cost whatever the shipping cost is 10 dollars right so i would recommend you guys to visit my previous session to see the action modes verify select and then wait on okay so we already verified the shipping ground cost as 10 dollars so now i want to verify the subtotal go to subtotal what is my subtotal my subtotal is now he here you need to use the math function what is my subtotal my subtotal is price of each one jeans multiplied by the quantity of the jeans correct so that becomes my subtotal okay so for that we need to use the math function okay math function curly braces it starts with curly braces so as soon as i enter math it is showing me the math function okay and then open braces square bracket and again the buffer function you need to specify under b i already explained you in my previous slides right curly braces b square braces here you need to call the buffer the where we store the price right price blue jeans we already stored so if you see it is automatically populating my buffer variable that i stored in my previous module correct so call that buffer price blue jeans so let's price blue jeans and then close square braces and then you need to close your curly braces multiplied by so price of the blue jeans multiplied by the quantity what is the quantity that we are taking it's 25 quantity right and then make sure that you close all the braces okay so if you see if the formula is correct it automatically converts into math blue jeans which is sorry here yeah math blue jeans buffer multiplied by quantity which is 25 if you see go back to by quantity okay let me go back to start checkout process if you see here so okay order product okay if you see here i am actually adding quantity of 25 so that's the reason i entered 25 okay so that is how you can use math function and the buffer function and also i want to verify the subtotal okay what is the uh, sorry what is my subtotal correct so if you see here my subtotal again the total sorry the total if you see the total total is the ground shipping method and your subtotal correct so now let's go here let's first store my subtotal what is my subtotal is this let me store the subtotal into a buffer again okay sub total okay let me store sub total into a buffer here you need to store into buffer okay so here again the verification part i have to convert into numeric okay i have to make sure it's a numeric so now what i am doing again sub total i am storing into buffer and now what is my total my total is my total is again math function 
my total is subtotal plus my shipping cost correct subtotal my plus shipping cost so here again math function math okay math open square braces open curly braces buffer again open square braces here i need to call subtotal right the buffer which i stored in the above step my subtotal plus 10 correct subtotal close braces plus my shipping cost here shipping cost okay close all the braces so this is my total i'm verifying if the total is equivalent to my subtotal plus shipping cost of 10 okay here i'm already storing subtotal into a buffer okay so now let's run this run this total test case okay let me log out and see if it works okay close let's go to shopping cart right click and run in scratchbook okay on scratchbook so it's going to open the web shop click on login it enters username password apparel and shoes and then you should click on blue jeans now it enters correct and it's gonna check out done click on continue continue so now at the confirmation page it should basically verify the prices if you see 25 25 plus 10 35 that's correct so successful the execution should be successful perfect i think a small there is a small discrepancy let's see what is the discrepancy okay so now if you see here card total card total yeah this one total is failed because okay uh, basically what we did the expected is 35 and actually is 35 here let's go back to verify prices sorry verification of the prices and here let me convert into numeric okay that we missed so if you convert into numeric it's gonna run successfully and then all the results will be passed okay let me run one more time it opens web shop login email address apples and shoes blue jeans enters the quantity done i agree check out so now the verification of two things one is we are verifying shipping cost by using verify sorry ground shipping cost and then we are using math function to add ground versus subtotal right and then we, we are verifying total amount so now the result should be successful perfect if you see everything is green at the bottom so that means all the results are success see here let's go back to verify prices okay verification of prices shipping method shipping method confirm order verify order successful let's see confirm order okay here so here verification of prices if you see first one is we verified just the shipping cost is 10 10 by using verify function and here we used buffer method okay subtotal is the price of your blue jeans where we added the price of blue jeans into a buffer called price blue jeans and then that multiplied by the quantity so now 
that is equal to your subtotal that is displaying on screen and then we stored this subtotal into a buffer and we are calculating total by using again math function subtotal plus your shipping cost right now successfully expected is 35 actually is 35 okay hope you understand our first two concepts buffer and math function now let's see dynamic text and random values how can we use these dynamic dynamic text and random values okay and dynamic date okay now for that let's copy this again let's copy this session 13 copy this entire folder and paste it into your parent folder and modify the name let's modify the name of this folder as session 13 here dynamic values and dynamic text numbers dates okay done once you modify the name now let's go to your process and then checkout process under checkout process i want to go for a payment information credit card okay here so let's do one thing this time i want to instead of using the card holder name constant barbara garden instead of the static value i want to generate a random text okay a random text how can we generate random text that's what i'm going to show here okay here let's use the function called random text random text if you see here this is my random text my random text and what is how much random text I want to use? I want to use the random text of 10. What it means? It actually generates a random text with the length of 10. Random text with the length of 10. Okay. To validate these formulas, right? Earlier also I thought of, uh, let me explain that. See, whatever the math functions you wrote here, if you want to validate if the function is correct or not, right click. And you need to run, uh, you need to translate the value, translate value. See if you see, okay, the value is translated to 25. That means the formula is correct. Here again, translate value, 35, that's correct. In the same way, here, random text, you can basically translate the value. See, it's generating the random text of 10, right? And then, let's do random value. So, if you see, the credit card, whatever the credit card that we are providing here, you can basically provide a random value, okay? How? Let's say here, the card code, I want to generate a random value. For that, you can use RND, okay? Curly braces, RND. This is my function, RND. And how I want to generate the values from 100 to 999. So, what it will do? It generates a random value between 100 and 999. Okay. This is how you can generate the random value. Let's validate this. Translate value. See, it is generating 652. Random value. And then, now, instead of, let's use random dates. Okay, here, instead of providing month, hard-coded value of April, 
I want to generate the date. How? Let's create a date function. Date. And here, I want to use a date function where the date is plus four months. That means it's got to generate a date which is four months from now. Okay. It's going to generate a month. Sorry. It's going to generate a month, four months from, from now. Okay. What is the format I want to print in the format of mm and close braces. Okay. So here what it will do? Current date plus four months. So that means and it generates in the form of 040506. Let's say now it's a Jan January. That means it's going to go for May. Right? Let's say it is February. Then it's going to go for March, April, May, June. Okay? So basically, I am actually generating the date dynamically. I am not hard coding the date. Now, how can I generate year? Instead of 2023, I want to generate the year dynamically. Again, the date function. Date, this time, instead of month, I need to use year. Let's say I want to use the year three years from now. Okay? Three years from now, in the form of y y y y in the form of y y y y okay so let's close the braces so if you see here what does this function do it takes the year three years from now additional three years from now in the form of y y y y okay so now let's save all this and see how these random, all, all dynamic values, whatever we provided here, right? Dynamic text, dynamic random values, dynamic date, okay? How does these translates into application? Let's run this test, okay? Let's run this test. Right click. Run in scratch book. So now it opens your web shop. Especially we need to concentrate on your credit card information that when, when we are entering. Okay. Is it going to generate the random value successfully or not? Okay. Done. Perfect. So if you see when it comes to payment information, now it creates Yeah. If you see here, now card holder name is different. Right, you can see the card holder name is different and everything is different. Let's go and verify the results. Okay. So if you see the results here, if you see the results here, under payment information, okay, it actually generated all these card code and all these things. I think hope you all see, hope you all understand how to generate the dates and all, right? Random dates, dynamic dates, dynamic text, dynamic values, okay? So this way, instead of using your hard-coded values, you can generate some dynamic values, okay? Hope you all understand the concepts. If you have any queries, Leave your queries in the comment box. I will try to respond to your queries. Thank you. Hope you all understand the concepts of how to use the action mode buffer. And then how can we use different kind of dynamic expressions while automating your test cases by using Tricentis Tosca 16. If you have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment box. I will try to respond to your queries. Please do subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon, you will receive notifications whenever I publish more videos. Thank you.